Happy Monday, Bears fans. Today's episode of Chicago Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. You guys can get 20% off plus free shipping from the best men's grooming products at manscaped.com. All you got to do is plug in our promo code BEARS20 to get 20% off. All right, uh, got some rumors here on a Monday. Later on in the show, we'll take a look at some takeaways, some news from Bears rookie minicamp as Chicago cut a few players this morning. But the big story going around the NFL the last 24 hours or so is Quinnen Williams, the possibility of a trade as he and the New York Jets continue to work on a potential contract extension. Rich Sibody, who covers the Jets uh, for ESPN, says that the two parties aren't close to a contract extension. Here's more uh, from Sibody. He says two defensive tackles from Quinnen Williams' draft class, Tennessee Titans' Jeffrey Simmons uh, at $23.5 million per year and the New York Giants' Dexter Lawrence uh, $22.5 million per year have received big extensions this offseason. Also throwing Deron Payne, who got a big deal along that defensive interior. Williams appears to be the next man up, but the two sides aren't close to an agreement, even though the second contract market for top defensive tackles is clearly formed. So, obviously, look, uh, the Bears did not necessarily get uh, that elite uh, interior defensive lineman uh, that they wanted to in the draft. You know, they've got a decent rotation. They got Dexter. They got Zach Pickens, but they still haven't gotten that proven uh, guy who can anchor that interior. Obviously, hopefully Dexter Williams becomes that. You look at how high-paid defensive linemen uh, have become high-paid, I should say. Obviously, uh, the big ones, Donald, Simmons, we mentioned Dexter Lawrence, of course, Deron Payne getting that big uh, contract as well, Javon Hargrave getting paid earlier this offseason. Uh, let me just say this. A Williams trade would be expensive on a multitude of fronts. One, the trade value would be a first-round pick and then some. It would cost you at least a one, probably another pick as well. And then you would have to pay him huge money. I mean, Dexter uh, Lawrence got $22.5 million per year. I think he's better than Dexter Lawrence. You probably have to pay him $23.24. Uh, doesn't mean he's not worth it. it. The Bears certainly have the cap space to do it if they want to. Uh, it's just something to consider uh, when you explore these type of possibilities that are out there. Now, the Bears do have the extra first-round pick next year. So uh, if Ryan Poles was convicted that Quentin Williams is a guy that could be here for a long, long time and help anchor this deal, defense, then sure, that's they've got the capital to do it. They could trade either their own or Carol or the Carolina pick. There is no chance, in my opinion, they would trade both first round picks. Uh, you know, maybe you throw in your third or one of your fourths, since you have two fourth round picks, picking up that extra one from Philadelphia during the NFL draft. So it's gonna cost a lot, but very good player. We'll explore a little bit more in a second, but want you guys to weigh in on the show. Would you trade a first round pick plus more to acquire Quinnen Williams? Type Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Let me know down in the comments section. Now, Quentin Williams is on the final year of his rookie contract. They picked up his fifth year last year, and he had a hell of a fourth season. I mean, 12 sacks, clearly the best year of his career, 28 quarterback hits. I mean, he was in the backfield a lot. A couple of forced fumbles as well. Pretty good against the run. Uh, now, the flip side of all of this is the Jets are trying to win right now. I mean, they just went out and got uh, – uh, that fraud Aaron Rodgers, F-A-R in the comments. Uh, so it would be kind of puzzling if they would consider trading Quentin Williams. But when two sides aren't close on a contract, that's going to speculate trade rumors, which is what we're discussing today. Again, you look at the Bears defensive line. I, you know, I'm high on the possibility of Jervon Dexter and Zach Pickens, but uh, hell, Allen Williams came out and said, Justin Jones is our three tech right now. So even he's saying, hey, William or uh, Pickens and Dexter, they're going to have to earn playing time. The point being is Quentin Williams would by far be your best defensive tackle and really your best defensive lineman overall. The problem is, again, the Jets are trying to win right now. Just because the two sides aren't close on a contract, the Jets don't have to pay him right now. Uh, I can't imagine that they would move him. Uh, now, he's skipping voluntary workouts. We'll see if he would consider a holdout in training camp and consider uh, missing games into the season. We'll see if uh, these talks uh, progress or heat up at all because right now it doesn't sound like there's much traction. But – Tell you what, if you could get a Quentin Williams on this defense, just thinking about it, it's a pretty exciting thing. All right, we'll jump to our next story in just a moment, but today's show is sponsored by 
by Manscaped. Summertime is upon us, and hey, you want to stay nice and groomed when you're sitting poolside, whether you got a nice pool body going or a little dad bod like me. Uh, you don't want to be having that loose shaving stuff. You know, you don't want to have too much chest hair. You know, a little bit's always a nice touch, but too much, you don't want that. The Performance Package 4.0 is going to keep you nice and groomed all over your body. It comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, which is below the waist grooming, and if you let that get out of control, uh, who knows what people might see at the pool. You got the uh, Weed Whacker 2.0 as well. It's going to trim your nose hairs, your ears hair. It comes with the Crop Preserver, which is those anti-chafing uh, ball deodorant product there. Crop Reviver, which is that ball sp uh, spray toner as well. A couple of free throw-ins as well. You get a pair of boxers with this. You get the Shed, which is their travel kit. All this stuff fits in there, and you can get it for 20% off. And what I like about the Performance Package is, yes, you're saving $26 with the 20% off, but it's really a lot more than that because if you buy all these products separately, you're looking at well over $150 uh, value, and you're getting it for just over 100 bucks. So use promo code BEARS20 uh, to get 20% off when you go to manscaped.com. You also get free shipping. That link and promo code is in the description and comments of this video. Should we be concerned about Darnell Mooney in his injury recovery? I'll be honest. This really wasn't even on my radar. Of course, he had that season-ending ankle injury, and Matt Eberflus mentioned he would likely have ankle surgery in the offseason, which uh, clearly that happened if uh, he's still recovering. Uh, Tyke Tolbert, Bears wide receiver coach, says that the Bears certainly hope that Mooney is ready for training camp. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, he had the injury in late November, probably had surgery in December, January. It's May now, so certainly hope that he's ready by late July. I mean, it doesn't sound like he's going to be participating much in the offseason program. That's that's a little concerning. I'll be honest with you. I certainly hope that's, that's not what you want to hear when it comes to a guy who's supposed to be a potential cornerstone piece of this offense. Here's Tolbert uh, a little bit more on Mooney. He says he's great with his rehab. He's running right now. He's doing well. His attitude has been great. He's in here every single day. So he's in there rehabbing, and if he's starting to run, that's a positive sign. But I'll be honest, the certainly hope thing has me, you know, it made me pause a little bit. Now, maybe that was poor phrasing on Tolbert's part. Maybe uh, he just wanted to, you know, have a cautious approach and didn't want to overpromise something in case Mooney has a setback or something like that. I'm not going to sit here and panic, but you need Darnell Mooney ready to go by training camp. Like, you you want to continue to build these reps and continue to build on that chemistry, uh, considering you lost a handful of games last year with the ankle injury. So keep an eye on this. Sir, something to monitor over the next couple of months as OTAs and mini camps take place. And then, of course, uh, training camp in July. If he's there by training camp, I'm good. But we get to training camp and he's not ready, uh, I'll officially be really concerned. Subscribe to Bears now for nonstop Chicago Bears news, rumors, uh, daily coverage here on the channel. We'll be live tomorrow as well, every Tuesday, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central time, just because the draft is over, just because free agency is slowed down significantly, uh, doesn't mean our coverage stops. We continue to bring you the latest news and rumors around the Chicago Bears. So subscribe today. We'll continue to have you guys in the loop. Now, a little bit more on this Mooney receiver conversation. Let's just say he's not there. The upside to him missing some of these lesser off-season dates, like OTAs coming up uh, here in a couple of weeks, et cetera, is Tyler Scott, Valus Jones, Chase Claypool. Like, these guys all get more reps, and I think there is positives in that because Mooney obviously has been with Fields for a few years. They've got that chemistry built. Uh, but for Mooney's sake, this is a massive year, right? Because, uh, you know, he had a nice little rookie season. Second year, he had the breakout year. Then last year, he started slow, but he was picking it up, and then, boom, the ankle injury ends his season. So that was a bit of a disappointment. He's now in the final year of his rookie deal. They traded for Chase Claypool and DJ Moore. They drafted uh, Tyler Scott. So it's not a guarantee that he is in the Bears' plans long term. I would like for him to be here, but he's got to perform this year. At this point, I don't think he'll get a contract extension before the season. I think they'll let this play out with him and Claypool and probably pick one of them. Uh, so hopefully for Mooney's sake, he can get back sooner than later because uh, – uh, this is a big year for him with hopes of getting paid. How concerned are you with Darnell Mooney's injury recovery? Scale of 1 to 10. I'll say 5 right now. I'm mildly concerned. I'm not panicking. It's only May, but... 
You could also say it's already May and the injury was late November. Like, why is this still a problem? Maybe the surgery got delayed. I don't know. Scale of 1 to 10, I'll give it a 5. Let me know what you guys think. All right, uh, let's wrap up today's show with some minicamp news and takeaways. Uh, you know, I thought about doing like a winners and losers, but there's not really like bad news at minicamp. Like, the only losers are the guys who got cut, who we'll mention here in a second, obviously for their sake, uh, they lost out and not impressing enough. Uh, these guys would be considered winners as the Bears did sign four players. We did an at-home video yesterday breaking these guys down. DeAnthony Jones, defensive lineman out of Houston. Notre Dame offensive lineman Josh Lugg. Braylon Trahan, the defensive back out of Louisiana. And then Steven Carlson, who was a 2019 UDFA out of Princeton, but spent three years with the Browns, 2019 to 21. They've added him, and he might have a chance to make the roster because uh, the Bears don't have really a proven third tight end. So maybe he gets a chance. So big win for him to have a good camp. Uh, for these guys, not so much. Uh, these three players got cut. Nick Amoa, offensive lineman out of UC Davis. Justin Broyles, the defensive back out of Oklahoma. Uh, and then Stony Brook tight end Damian Caffrey. So those three players did not impress enough during rookie minicamp. Obviously, this 90-man roster will continue to be in flux uh, between now and roster cutdown day. Okay, uh, some other notes from rookie minicamp competition is going to be very heated at most positions. Uh, you know, you've already seen that uh, uh, during rookie minicamp, but you really go position by position. Obviously, quarterback fields is a starter, but running back. Uh, Roshan Johnson, uh, Deontay Foreman, and, and obviously Khalil Herbert. That's going to be competitive. Receiver, we've talked about that a bunch. You go six or seven deep now. A lot of competition there. Uh, tight end, not so much. Komet's your number one. Tanyan's your number two. Uh, offensive line, maybe not for your starters, but uh, for backup spots, absolutely. Different Defensive line, a lot of competition because you still have a lot of unproven people there, a lot of opportunity. Linebacker is going to be competitive. Uh, secondary, there will be some competition at corner. So uh, I'm excited about that. Poles and Eberflus did a good job this offseason in free agency and in the draft to create more depth and competition. Uh, and most players on this team should earn, have to earn starting roles outside of a few guys. All right, number two, Roshan Johnson is a dude. I mean, you just continue to hear more and more and more about uh, this kid's character, uh, his ability as a player. Um, they love this kid, uh, and there's a chance he could start. I, you know, I don't know if he'll be the week one starter, and even if he does start, we know the Bears will go running back by committee. There will be a rotation with Herbert and likely Deontay Foreman as well. Uh, but this is this regime's David Montgomery. I mean, they 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 replaced Monty with Roshan Johnson, and uh, he might even have a little bit more juice than Monty. So I'm fired up about this kid. I can't wait to see the pads go on and see that competition at running back, and then uh, you know, kind of building off of that. First First bullet point of competition is Noah Sewell will push Jack Sanborn to be this team's third linebacker. Obviously, TJ Edwards and uh, Tremaine Edmonds, those are your top two uh, backers there uh, after signing them in the offseason. Sanborn right now, I would pencil him as the Sam linebacker, uh, but uh, they drafted Sewell for a reason. He was a projected uh, top or a first two day pick uh, going into this year and didn't have his best year of his college career but to get him in the fifth he made a nice play at rookie minicamp where he jumped up on a crossing pattern tipped the ball off and Kendall Williamson uh, picked it off tipped it up I should say and then Williamson picked it off so if he can show some coverage skills uh, I think he's got a chance to be your third linebacker right away who do you guys think will be LB3 type JS for Jack Sanborn NS for Noah Sewell Sewell's got more ability but Sanborn's more proven in the system obviously should be fun to see how these competitions break down. All right, folks, that's it for today. Again, we will be live tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central time, so join us then. My name is Harrison Graham. Bear down. We'll see you guys soon.